Hey everybody, welcome to Young Money Investments. My name is Cameron Benyon and in today's video, we're gonna have lots of cheesy lines and a little bit of fun as we talk about a small account challenge. If you have ever thought about trying to get started in shorting and have wanted to actually come along with me on this journey and start shorting with an account under 25,000, this is the series for you. This is the video that we are gonna get started and I'm going to give you five, yes, five specific rules which you are gonna to wanna to stick around for through the entire video to learn because these are five steps, five simple but very crucial and important steps that I have taken in order to be a profitable and successful short seller in the stock market. There are a lot of things that can potentially really destroy your account but these are some things that will really help you in the long run. So let's get rolling, let's get started, and I can't wait to uh, show you all these cool things. Let's head in. All right, you guys. So like I said, we are gonna be taking in this series an account from right there, $13,000 to $25,000. We are gonna get an account under PDT, over PDT. For those of you who are not aware of what PDT is, that stands for Pattern Day Trader. So anyone in the United States that has under $25,000 is not able to do more than three day trades per uh, five business days, basically. So if I were to use three, three day trades, if I was to buy, sell, buy, sell, buy, sell, on Tuesday, I would not be able to do that again all the way until the following Tuesday. You have to wait five business days, that includes the weekends, obviously, because those are not business days, and you're not able to day trade anymore. Um, in this series, we're gonna be talking about how to do this profitably and effectively in order to get your account over 25,000 and really start rolling and really start being able to take a few more trades, make a little bit more money, and actually be profitable in the markets. One of the ways you can do that is actually following me here in the Discord group. So this is my private mentorship, but I want to talk about my free, yes, I said free, <laughs> um, private, or not private, because it's open to the public, uh, mentorship group. So here in the We Trade HQ tab, you will have a link down here in the description. You are free to get in this for free. Um, and I have my own tab down here. It's called Young Money Investments. You can get in here. Obviously, there are lots of other traders just like yourself that are wanting to learn more about the markets, get involved. And I'm gonna be posting in here on a daily basis, helping out, I'm probably putting my watch list in here as well, so you don't even have to pay for that. Um, and this will kind of give you the ability to kind of go along with me through this journey. I love it if you're interested in starting and going along with me in this. For those of you that are looking for a little bit more help, there is my paid private mentorship. So you can go in here, we have our short positions, our main channel, we do options, I do swing trading, um, I do long-term investments. Um, I do it all, but mainly in this, I do a lot of shorting. So in here, I go over my call outs, I go over what I'm gonna be trading that day, I go over potential entries, my exits, when I do get in, when I get out, all that stuff, and I'm live in there pretty much every single day um, of the week that I am trading. So that's something I don't believe very few, if any, uh, other mentors out there actually do that. So that's just something that I love to do because I love trading, I love the stock market. Um, but that is just a second option. Like I said, you can do the free version, you can do the paid version. Um, doesn't really, you know, it doesn't really matter to me. I just want to really document all of these things here while we are on uh, YouTube. So let's roll into it. Let's talk about my five rules right now. And like I said, you're gonna probably wanna stick around for all these because they have really helped me quite a bit. Rule numero uno is going to be know the market that you're trading in. Right now, we are in a very grindy, very unpredictable market. Um, for a while, we had it run up. Ever since December of 2018, we had seen this massive, massive run up in the market. Nothing was stopping the growth. Nothing was stopping the, the increase. And then all of a sudden, people thought that the China Chinese trade deal is not going to go down and happen, and the stock market has been tumbling. So you need to understand if it's a grindy green market, if it's a tumultuous red market, if it's a bear, if it's a bull, you need to understand what market you're trading in. And especially in the penny stock market, you need to understand what other penny stocks are doing. Uh, for example, there has been a lot of companies recently, ETLK, ABIO, SOLY, um, that have all been popping 
and holding their gains and grinding sideways for a while until they start to fade out. You need to know that if companies are doing that, that it's not a smart idea to get started shorting on the first green day. There's a rule for some, for some traders, for some short sellers, do not short on the first green day. And that's because you don't wanna pay locate fees, you don't wanna hold it overnight if you don't have to, because that will eat into your profit. So that is gonna be my first rule, and that is a pretty crucial rule I'd say, is understand what other big, running, big runners are doing. And if they are a multi-day runner, don't get in on the first green day. Wait it out, wait for it to grind sideways for a little bit, and then take your entry, and then be able to ride it out. Because you're risking a lot less than what you would be if you're risking on the first green day. All right guys, rule number two is going to be know the chart history of the company that you're trading. Oftentimes it's very tempting, especially if you're in a chat room, where someone's calling out these tickers and you see that it's running super high and you're like, I'm gonna get in on that, I'm gonna short that thing and I'm just gonna make bank. Problem is, is if you haven't done your due diligence and your research and seen how high that company has run previously, especially where you're only allowed three day trades, it can be a very risky bet to get into something that fast. So one of my big rules for if you are trading under PDT is look at the chart history before jumping in. If you miss out on $100 on $200, it happens, it's okay. But one of the things looking at these charts here, ABIO, we're looking at it right here on the one day, one year chart. This company has had a long history of when it does spike, spiking anywhere from 15 to up here at you know $23. That is a 44 to 45% difference, even if you're shorting up here at the very peak, shorting all the way at $15. So that is something that you really need to take into consideration if you are shorting these companies. You cannot go too big, too heavy, too early because you can easily, very, very easily get burned hard and end up taking a very substantial loss because your account could not handle this. Same thing with CTRM. CTRM has had histories of jumping all the way up here to 18 to $19. Yes, it's had some smaller ones where it jumps to 844, but again, for example, today alone, CTRM actually ran all the way during pre-market hours, all the way up to highs of 10 of 1010. Now some people would go, yeah, you should short this. The RSI is up here, you know, the RSI is at a 90, but the RSI was at a 90 all the way down here. If you would have started shorting here, you would have been very, very red. And so these are things that you need to take into consideration. If you're day trading this and you start seeing that downward momentum, sure, you're okay, you know, that, that works. But if you are a pattern day trader, you need to make sure that the confirmation is there because this thing very easily, as we've seen in the past, could run and jump a lot, lot higher than this measly $10. We could have easily seen this thing run another 80, 90% if you weren't careful. And so that is gonna be my really uh, big piece of advice is make sure to know the chart history of the company that you're trading. All right guys, rule number three, and this is gonna be a really important one that I've touched on previously, and that is know the float of the company you're trading. Now you might go, Cameron, what are you talking about? What is the float of a company? Float is basically the number of shares that are commonly being traded out there. So we're gonna actually take a look here on my good old friend Finviz at another company that we've been talking about a little bit, and that is gonna be ticker symbol ABIO, which is a biopharmaceutical company. You can get a, ch a chance to look at the charts here. This is the section that you're gonna to wanna to be looking at. I think we might actually even move this over so that everything is not in the way. So you're gonna be looking right here at the shares, the shares in float. So there is a total of 1.42 million shares in float or outstanding, and there is about 1.4 million shares in float. Now, what does that mean? That's probably gonna be your question is, what does that mean that they're in float or what does this mean for you? Yes, the short float is only 5%, right now but what does this mean what this means for you as a short seller is that this company is going to be very susceptible to short squeezes because the float is very low when that stock starts to rise and more traders get in on it it can spike very quickly and very rapidly and you can be red in your position very quickly and so you need to be careful that when that positive news comes out that positive phase three trials or whatever it might be 
that you're not getting it on the front side because again, it can push up very quickly and very rapidly. Let's take another, a look at another one really quickly or look at a couple more. We can look at S-O-L-Y, another company, another one that has been having had a massive spike from $5 all the way up here to 29. You can see again, shares outstanding was is 13.98. Shares in float are meaning the shares that are basically being traded. So a lot of it's locked up by some of the some of the uh, basically the the board, the board of directors are they're actually insta they're owned basically. Um, they're not normally traded. So about half of the float, a little bit less than half, or half of the shares outstanding, pardon me, are in float. Um, right now there's 5.17% in short float right now. Um, but the problem is, is looking at this company only having 5.27 million shares. That means again, that this company can be very easily manipulated. That's not a lot of shares out there. If you look at a company like Apple, for example, why would this company not be able to be shorted very easy? Well, because there is a total of 4.6 billion shares out there. You would have to have a whole lot of money in order to influence and affect the price of Apple. Whereas a company like ABIO, SOLY, uh, CTRM is another good one. You're going to only need, for example, CTRM is a great one. Why has this thing spiked this high so fast? Because there is only 0.81 million shares in float. That is an obscene, obscene, crazy number or small number of shares out there. And so when this company squeezes, it's going to squeeze very hard and it's going to go very high and it causes a lot of short sellers to have to cover at a higher price and they end up losing their money. It causes the price to go higher and it's just a bad situation for short sellers. Different one that's gonna be a little bit different is going to be ELTK. One more, again, the shares 0.88 million in float. You're just seeing this spike that has these massive spikes. Let's take a look at one more, OTLK though. This one is gonna be a little bit more different. This one has about 14.41 million shares in float. Um, so as you can see, this one is, is gonna be a little bit harder to uh, really affect. I mean, if we change this to, oh, monthly, you're gonna see that over the past couple years, this thing really hasn't been popping. I mean, yes, it had a, had a pop here, but I mean, this thing is really coming down. It's not easily manipulated like a company like CT, what is it, CTRM or ELTK could be. So this is a little bit different when it has that many shares in float, you're not as susceptible to short squeezes. Still can happen, but you're a lot less susceptible when the float is a little bit larger. And guys, last but not least, who stuck around for this whole video up to this point, Please hit that thumbs up button. It always helps out the channel. It is going to be know when to cut your losses and needing to cut them quick. Um, you cannot afford big mistakes at this point in the game. When you have a bigger account, you can afford a $5,000 loss. You can afford a $2,000 loss here. On a small account challenge like this, you have very little room to take big losses. You can take small losses. Small losses are okay. Be okay with taking small losses. Do not be okay with letting big losses get out of hand because they will devastate you not only in the financial portion of your account, it will affect you mentally. So learn to cut your losses quick. That's why, like I said, the private mentorship is, is so great. Having someone there to kind of bounce ideas off of other great traders, not just myself, but other people that are great, that are there to learn, are so crucial in helping you in your development process. You're either gonna pay by losing money to the markets or you're gonna pay by getting a fast track education to becoming profitable and successful. Um, if you have any other questions, if you have comments, leave them down in the comment section. I am excited to get this small account challenge rolling. Let's get it going here on Young Money Investments. I will talk to you guys later. Bye.